Hi, everybody. My name is Megan Fiddler. I'm the nursery manager here at Plant Delights Nursery. I want to introduce you to Chris Hardison. He's a nursery man with over 10 years of experience. Probably more, right? 30. 30. Oh, geez. <laughs> um, today, we're going to want to talk about container gardening. And container gardening is an entirely different science and procedure than when you're planting things out in your garden beds. So if you're going to put something on your front porch, we want to show you how to do it right. I'm going to go through and talk about soils, fertilizers, pots, and pot arrangement. And then I would like Chris to take over and talk about the kinds of plants, the waterings that you're going to need, and the way to actually make your pot sparkle. So we've got a whole demonstration set up right over here. So let's take a little walk. So if you're going to grow in containers, there's two major things that I really want you to think about. One is the kind of container that you choose, and the most important is your media, your soil media. So if you're out and you're buying a bunch of annuals from a box store, go ahead and get the miracle Grow that has all those heavy fertilizers in there because the plants are only going to be around for a year and it's going to look great. But if you're planting some of our perennials, you're going to want to choose a different soil and a different media because you want to be able to fertilize it throughout the year so that when the water hits the soil, those salts don't slowly rise up and cause that burn, which happens over time when you're dealing with pots and plants. My favorite kind of pot, of course, is going to be the basic terracotta. That's going to help keep the plant cool from the outside. Remember that sun and cold weather are going to be hitting on the outside of the pot. And when the plants are big, they put their roots out and it touches those sides of those pots. So if it gets too hot and we have a bunch of plants that are actually temperature sensitive, you will see burn off on the tops of the plants or in the regions where the roots are being damaged from being in a pot. You can get around this though. If you pick out a fancy plastic pot, okay, that you like, or like, or ceramic, that you like, you can cheat and make something called a double pane pot. Now, if you buy a double pane pot in the store, it's going to be like sixty to ninety dollars for something that size. Those are just like your double pane windows in your house, where there's actually an air gap in between two layers of a ceramic pot so that when the roots reach out, it's got an actual safety layer in between there so that they don't get too hot or they don't get too cold. I like to go ahead and, or my, ah, here's my gravel. I like to go ahead and buy my fancy pot and then lose my microphone and then find a pot that's approximately one inch less in diameter that fits in that pot. The big trick to this kind of skill is you have to make sure that you maintain drainage. My favorite thing to use for this is number three gravel. It's the same thing we have in our parking lot. I like this gravel because if any of the soil media leaks through and gets through this, it's big enough that it's probably going to wash out the holes in the pot and you're going to maintain that drainage, which is really important. So I like to add just a little bit of that layer in there replace our pot, and then we get to choose our media. I have three types of media that I'd really like to show you. If you've got plants that are really super water loving, I really like mixing in the peat moss. The peat moss with any of the regular potting soils is going to do very, very well. It's going to hold a lot of moisture. It's going to help your plant stay wet. And instead of having that continual release potting mix that often has too much fertilizer, you can control that by making your media mix. For most of my preference, I like 60% of a regular potting mix and 40% of a peat moss for something that's really wet. If you have a plant that's a little finicky about being in a pot, so we're talking trilliums, we're talking cypripediums, we're talking things that need a little more structure, I like to go one step further, and that's permatil. 
I love permatill. It's in most of the garden beds that we plant in here on the property and in my own house. We use it for the trilliums. We use it for the cypripediums because it has a higher cation exchange. In layman's terms, it helps the plant take up nutrients faster. It also is a baked product, so it has a whole bunch of little holes in it, which means it has lots better control of moisture. Not only does it drain better, but it also makes the soil stay wetter because the water can get in those little holes and as the soil dries out, the plants can reach little roots in and get to it. So, Would you use permatill instead of the gravel? On the bottom? Yeah. You can, absolutely. Uh, but what, the only thing I worry about is, so if I'm using peat, we're going to get a lot of peat coming out of that pot as, as we water over time. So if we're using the bigger media, actually let's give that an accurate demonstration. I'm still getting some media out, but it's not the same amount. The permatill does have a chance to actually catch some of that because it's a smaller media and you don't have a lot of holes down here to move all of that forward. So we want to keep drainage. Okay, drainage, yeah. drainage, drainage. Unless you're doing a bog garden, which Chris is going to talk about, we want to maintain that drainage. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and do my 40, and because I'm going to put permatill in this, I'm going to do a 30, and then a 10. And you mix that all together, and that's a good potting mix. That's fantastic. The media that you put your plants in is so important, so please don't skip that step of thinking about this. Now, my potting mix is very low in fertilizer, as I said, so I have two options now. The first one is what I really like to use in the nursery, and it's called a CRS, CRF formula, or controlled release formula. There's typically three types of these formulas, 180 day, um, 100 day, and a 90 day. The more that you water these, the faster the fertilizer is going to drop in the pots. Also, heat makes a big difference. So if you're nervous about having fertilizer burn on some of your plants, for example, um, the spigelia hate this fertilizer. They get root burn all the time. We can't use this on that crop. So know your plants. Give it a check out. If you have any questions, just email us. The other option is the trifecta. I love this mix. And that's seaweed, humic acid, folic acid, and a little bit of soil hume. I love this. It's a great fertilizer. You can get it on the back of all of these. There's actually going to be a chart for how much you want to use and when you want to use it. But that trifecta you can make yourself. So, for example, if you're looking for something like bulking up a bulb, you want to try to do something maybe with a little more uh, potassium in there because bulbs really get chunky for that. It's great for all of our Morphophallus. That's how we got the uh, Morphophallus titanium to bloom a couple years ago. So that's basics on potting. Um, I really stand very much by the double pane pot. And I forgot to tell you, after you put this in here, put something in here too. So you can put more soil, you can put sand, and then you can raise the soil level and no one will ever know that you cheated and you have a second pot in there. And again, that's so that the roots, when they reach out and touch, they're not going to burn and they're not going to get cold, which is going to give you a much better hardiness for anything that's kept in a pot. If you have a plant in a pot, it loses two zones of hardiness, one for cold, or two for cold, two for heat. So by making a double pane pot, you lower the risk of actually having plants be damaged. Now Chris is going to talk about how to put the plants in the pot and make them look great. Question. Go ahead. Uh, I saw what some people do on some large containers. They actually cut out the bottom. Mm -hmm. basis. He's going to talk about it. It just sits right on top of the soil. Mm -hmm. that, that just sounds, that's really different from everything. Yeah, cutting the whole bottom out is a little different. Um, we're actually going to we're going to drill holes in the bottom of this pot for drainage. Um, one thing too, I was going to talk about is bog gardens, um, pitcher plants. Um, they, a lot of the irises do really well in container bog gardens. And we've got one over in the sales area. And basically, we drilled a hole about midway of the pot and used a similar uh, potting mix mixed with um, sphagnum, heat moss. Um, and by having the hole here, 
this maintains water in the lower part which can seep up. So your pitcher plants, they like wet toes, dry ankles. So the crown of the plant likes to be dry. They like to have their roots in the water. So by having the hole here, it allows this top part to dry out, but there's always moisture for them to reach their roots down into. So if we're bar garden, there'll be no holes in the bottom? No holes in the bottom. Inside. Just We just did one in the side, so it's not... So if it does get a lot of rain, it doesn't just like stay full of water all the time, but it does allow for some drainage, but it also allows for it to stay moist. For this container, um, we're gonna drill holes in the bottom. They've actually got little holes marked here. All right. Now these holes will allow for drainage of the media just like the pot and pot with the gravel in the bottom. So, we're gonna start with putting some media in. And one thing you wanna think about when um, you're putting your plants together is the aesthetics of the plant, of the container and how it's gonna look throughout the year. If y'all wanna pass these around. Um, we like to call what we say thriller, filler, and spiller. So thriller is something like an accent piece that's going to stand out in your container. Fillers are going to kind of take up and fill in the space around it. And spillers are going to fall over the edge and create a cascading effect. So you want to take into account the types of plants. Um, you don't want to put hostas and cannas in the same planter because you need to think about sun requirements, water requirements. So. What we're gonna do today, I've got two plants that I'm gonna use for thrillers, uh, blueberry Sunday canna and the flashpoint nephofia, which is a red hot poker, but it's kind of a creamy yellow color. And they're both gonna get about five to six foot. So they're gonna make a nice centerpiece here. And for fillers, you could use all the same thing. Um, you could mix things up depending on you know, what your aesthetic is, um, what look you're going for, um, and also where your container is going to be situated, where it's going to be in the garden, also makes a difference in how you arrange it. So if it's going to be up against their garage or something where the backside's not going to be seen, you may want to put your thriller in the back and work your filler, your thriller, your fillers, and your spillers around the front edge. If it's going to be where it's seen from all around, put your thrillers in the middle. So, <clears throat> so for some of the, my, the fillers, I'm going to use um, Coryopsis, the Red Hot Vanilla, uh, the Nirembergia, Starry Eyes, and the Penstemon Joe S. Gemenic, or however you say that. Um, and you want also want to think about how the container is going to look throughout the growing season and as it grows. So your ornamental grasses, it's going to bloom in the fall, so that'll give you some fall interest. Your canna is going to bloom throughout the summer. That's going to give you summer color along with the leaf color. Um, for the spillers, I'm using the sedum, uh, Prima Angelina, and Verbena Lavender Frappe. So one of the most important things when you're planting is you want to break up the roots. And with a lot of the plants that you may get from us, they may have been in these containers for a year or two. Some of them, it takes a while. Some of them grow fairly quickly, but you can see all the roots. Don't be afraid. You want to break those roots up so they don't continue growing in a circle. If they do that like they're growing in the pot, they're not going to take up water. They're not going to... And if you break off of some of the feeder roots, it's not going to really make a difference. And another big thing to know is that even if you are planting in the garden, this soil mix is particular for pots. 
So if you don't take that media off and you're putting it directly in your yard, you're not going to get a good contiguity between what gets watered and what doesn't. It can be hydrophobic or it can stay too wet. So it's really important to ruffle that baby up, get that media off if you're putting it in the ground too. And one thing I like to do when planting in the ground is to you know dig the soil and the native soil that's there, add some compost, and then I just break this media up and kind of mix it in with the soil that's in the hole and that way you have some continuity so it does flow. <clears throat> so since I've got two thrillers here, I'm going to kind of put those next to each other and see there again this nephophia. Yeah. Um, you can take a soil knife, you can just just want to get those roots broken up. And some people are like, oh my gosh, you're killing the plant. No, you're okay. And I mean, this is what we do in the prop shed all the time. And while you're, and while you're doing this, you can also go in and divide if you want to. Well, this one's not dividing very easily. Mm -hmm. There we go. So you, now you got two plants. So you can do two planters. You can put one in the planter and one in the ground. Um. <laughs> Silently. They're happy their roots are free. They're going to get into a bigger container and be able to grow. <clears throat> so we've got our two thrillers there. And you got to think about how things are going to grow. Um, over the season, so I'm going to kind of have some spillers spaced around. We'll kind of put that one there. And the grass is going to get a little bit taller too, so we'll, we'll kind of do the, the, let's see, I want the grass over here because the grass is a nicer contrast with the yellow against the burgundy and it looks too much like the nephophia. So I'll put the agastache over here. and a red hot vanilla. So we just got a mix here. You could do them all the same. Um, if you look at some of the different containers along the road, you, there's different color combinations. Um, the burgundy cannas with the red hot pokers, or you could go for a tropical feel with colocasias and cannas. Um, and then we'll come back with our spillers and kind of fill those in around the side. I'm gonna alternate and put two on either side so you'll have purple and yellow cascading over the side. Um, the sedum is evergreen, so it's going to be evergreen during the winter. The nephophia will maintain foliage through the winter. The canna will die back. And the grass, you will, it, it'll die back to the ground, but it'll maintain the structure and the stem. So you will, will still have some um, <clears throat> excuse me, color and appeal throughout the season. He's really good at that. If you guys want to take a look around, we actually have a whole lot more pots that are ranging all the way down the parking lot. And if you are interested in how to cheat and make a bog pot, uh, we do have that up in the sales area. Uh, the second way you can do that is actually put the pot in the ground. Again, good cheating structure. Same thing with the holes. And you can pretend like you have a small section of bog in your yard, but really you're doing container growing. Does anybody have any questions, or does anybody want to help plant? <laughs> <laughs> is there a, I can't think of a better term, is there a life expectancy of that arrangement? Is it too big, you have to take them um, place them, or? Probably. Life expectancy for this, this kind of potting. Yeah, probably a couple years. I mean, and, and it depends on what plants you use. Um, Thank you. There's some plants you can use solitary in containers, like agaves and mangaves or yuccas make a nice evergreen accent in a container by themselves. Um, and they can last in those containers for years. Um, hostas are great in containers. Um, if you've got a patio, a shaded patio, and you don't really have any area to plant, a container of hostas, or two or three hostas in different containers, and it'll, you can rearrange the containers, just like moving furniture around. <laughs> so, any other questions? Yeah. 
got a pot, it's got something in it, and I, you know, if I look at it, it's like, whoa, the roots are really bad. Do I need to repot it? Well, like th this, after probably two years, it would probably need, it would need to be disassembled and divided. And, and a lot of times what I do at home is out around the pool, I've got big containers and I'll put stuff in there, put perennials in there, grow them off for a year. So have nice containers throughout the summer. And then the next spring, break the containers apart, put the plants in the yard. And the other thing is if you're thinking about root bound, root bound isn't necessarily a bad thing. I grow bonsai. <laughs> and the whole point is tiny, tiny pot, big plant. And it's got tiny pot, big plant syndrome. So when you're <laughs> taking those out, we want to actually put them back into the same pot size. And for most bonsai, if you take an actual root rake, you can move all of those roots from those wider pots and straight them down. And a lot of times you're going to just cut 40% of those roots off right back in the same pot. So. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.